What's going on YouTube boys and girls? Thought I'd show you what I was up to today. Um, today, I uh, my PC that I do all my video recording on, um, the graphic card is kind of junk. Uh, it's, or at least I think that it's junk. Um, come to find out, my power supply is only throwing out 18 amps on a 12 volt rail. And uh, that's really actually, that's kind of starving the graphic card as well as other components in the system. So. I really I need a, a power supply upgrade, but um, the graphic card's not that great either. I'm going to end up replacing that here pretty soon. Um, right here we have a power supply out of a Dell Precision 490 that I had sitting around. Obviously, um, of the 490 series of the Precisions, those are pretty old now, so that's practically worthless junk anyway. But uh, if you take a look inside you actually get a nice 750 watt power supply that has four 12 volt rails, three of which have 18 amps running on them, uh, the other one of which has 16 amps running on it. If you do the math and you combine all that out, uh, you roughly get about 58 amps on the 12 volt rail combined out of that power supply. More than enough to power most uh, graphic cards that I would need anyway for uh, video production wise. So. Anyway, um, if you know anything about Dell and the way that they like to do things, they'll shove standard components, or at least what looks like a standard component, into their cases. <clears throat> but the, uh, especially with the power supplies, they will be pinned out differently. They are proprietary. So, if you look here on my PC, let's slide you on over here. I've got the pinout diagram here for the standard Dell which is this power supply we got here. And then I've got the power supply pinout for a normal ATX motherboard. So what I'm doing today is disassembling the 24 pin ATX connector on this power supply. So to do that, real simple little trick. If you take a staple stapler and either eject the staples without the bottom on it or just you know break them off of the brick when you get them and you basically you're going to take some needle nose pliers and you're going to bend off one of the legs of the staple there to where you create just a nice little 90 degree tool and if you slip it in to and let's see if we can zoom in here at all readjust that So if we slip it in to either side of the pin, so right now the connector is you know, technically I guess upside down, right side up, however you want to envision that, but you're looking at the connector side of the, of the cabling here, and we're going to slide this pin just to the right of it, and when you push it in you kind of feel it, not really click but you'll kind of feel that little bit of resistance that's it pushing the pin out of the way and if you just manipulate the cable to where you press harder against that staple and then you're going to wedge your second staple in there on the left hand side and it should just feel tight and then just grab the cable from the back side, give a little jiggle, and out it'll pop out. Take out your staples. And to get a little bit of a closer look here at what I'm talking about, what we're doing on the actual inside of this, let's see if I can zoom in any more. Without it going. Focus camera, focus. There we go. So you see these two little wings on the side here, right there. Up top right there. What we're doing is, is we're using the staple to wedge against the side of the plastic casing. We'll take another reference pin over here. So you're using the staple to press up against the side of the casing and push that little, that little wing of this clip down. So once you get both of those actually collapsed down, the cable will basically slide right out. So let's see if I can multitask enough here. I think I'm going to have to zoom out. Let's see if I can multitask enough here and do it 
as smoothly as I did that last one. Sometimes you gotta work at it a little bit, jiggle around, resituate your staples. Of course, staples aren't the easiest thing in the world to handle by themselves. That felt pretty good there. A little jiggle. And out comes the cable. Easy peasy. So I had already started before I got the idea that, hey, my viewers might want to see this. My techie viewers out there anyway. So I've got six, seven, let's see. Actually, I've got 13 more of these cables left to go. So obviously that's not gonna make for good content. So I'm going to break here and then we'll be right back. All right, there you have it. Totally disconnected. So now, bring this guy up and it's gonna just be simply, for the most part, between the two and, you know, depending on what power supply that you're actually ripping one out of, um, you know, the pinouts are going to be different, and the coloring and the wiring is going to be different. But, uh, of course, with Google as your friend, um, actually, in my case, I use Bing Search because I love those Bing points. Anyway, I managed to find the pinout of the exact same um, power supply here with references to what each color uh, is putting out. So, you know, your 3.3 .3 volt, your 5 volt, your 12 volt. Um, split into you know the different rails, the standby, the ground, power OK signal, all that good stuff. And then of course if you image search anywhere you'll find 500 million hits on you know on an ATX, a standard 24 pin ATX pin out and what each of those wiring colors are. So that way if any of the colors don't match you know we'll be able to cross reference what they're actually putting out and be able to put it all together. So now I'm going to start putting it back together for a standard ATX loadout. We're going to dump it into my machine. And then hopefully I'll be cutting together this video that you guys are watching right now on that machine running with this power supply. All right, things are getting real crazy now. So in repinning out our 24-pin uh, standard, uh, came across one... Um, one of the pins here that it's slightly different um, when I referenced my existing ATX power supply that's in my tower currently one of them has one of the orange 3.3 volt um, coupled with the 3.3 volt brown with sensor um, that sensor is just basically a reference voltage just to basically as a check for the power supply so I tied those two together here um, that one, I believe, goes into pin 13 up top here. So we can take this guy and slide him on around. Like so. It's probably not going to fit now because I made the grip a little too big on there. So we can fix that. doing this um, also noticed that's gonna be loose. also noticed that uh, I don't have enough 5 volt on this power supply so uh, for a standard ATX so I had to reach out and grab a non utilized 5 volt that was sitting on um, actually this guy here, which is an extend out for your SATA. So this one I'm not gonna necessarily need. Um, I think I will put it back, but um, there's two pins, actually three pins that are not utilized at the top half of this connector here. And so this connector had a both a common and a five volt populated in those spots. So we'll just pull that on out since this cable's not using it anyway and then bring that on over to here. Once we get that done, um, we should have enough 5 volt. <coughs> we should have enough common. Um, I saved the common for last because it was short just by counting, um, but I think after pulling that one, we'll be fine. 
And then um, I took the body of the uh, power supply apart just so I can uh, take off some more of these clips and pull this as, as tight as I can possibly get it um, so it'll reach because it is going to be a little snug but we'll get there so almost ready to pop back in and finally here's the end of my Frankenstein project now the uh, at that last clip there I'd said that you know I was trying to get as much cabling out of the uh, the body of the power supply here as possible um, that ended up proving uh, to not make any difference because uh, what they gave me versus what I needed um, you can see I've got it coiled up right down in here but uh, my 24 pin comes down pretty far away from uh, where this guy was going to end up reaching to so uh, got on Amazon picked myself up a little three dollar extension 24 pin extension and plugged that up so no biggies there um, kind of one of the downfalls I suppose of uh, using an OEM power supply and a custom built tower but you know doing things on the cheap trying to save some monies here um, anyway so what I ended up having to do um, as well uh, the whole purpose behind this upgrade on my tower here and uh, I know you're gonna say this, this is probably the ugliest uh, cable management that you've seen but you know what hey I've built prettier towers this isn't one of them this is just my workhorse this is my my daily duty PC so it just needs to run and run well so um, anyway the whole purpose behind this was to be able to throw in this graphic card um, this is a GTX 680 SC uh, this particular graphic card needs two 6 pin uh, 12 volt power supplies uh, stock this one comes with one 6 pin built into it um, once again this has a ton of extra pinouts though for the OEM uh, precision model that it came out of so what I ended up doing was utilizing the 20 pin power 2 and uh, pulling off the 12 volt and commons off of that and then repinning that into a 6 pin jack there so this is all pulled off of the, uh, the secondary common uh, 20 pin and then uh, you notice this guy is really super short um, they did that on purpose because they give you this extension um, so if you don't need an auxiliary card in your precision you don't need it you pull it out um, less clutter less wire clutter better airflow so but we're gonna need it in this application because obviously we're going right in there so let's slap this together. I've already actually booted the machine uh, to make sure that my pinout was right and I didn't blow the thing up. So everything's been great so far. I'm gonna probably just pretty much wrap this up because uh, once I get it up and running, then uh, this card's gonna be able to start rendering my videos a lot better for me than what it was uh, in its previous state. So you'll know that I had a successful install with my 680. Uh, when you guys see the video up on my channel. This is it for me for now for this project. Um, we got more content to come. We've got a couple other videos that I'm working on. But like I said, I have, this machine was my workhorse and I just kind of started getting a little tired of the uh, long render times for this PC. So I had to get an upgrade going on it if I was going to continue making videos with this guy. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, please remember to leave a like and uh, throw a comment down below and I'd be glad to talk to you about this build and what else was uh, entailed to it. But uh, until next time, it's just another day at the office for me.